All right, everyone, welcome one, welcome all to the Casey and Tyler Show, episode 32. Uh, tried to do episode 32 last week. Riverside just hates us, man. I don't know what's going on. Don't website. even. Don't use it. Uh, never yeah. use. Never use. Sorry, you. You. You said it. Shouldn't have said um, it. Never use Riverside, folks. Use a different app. They suck. We're gonna attempt to get back on schedule this week. Uh, hopefully, no unforeseen things happen. Hopefully, you guys have a Tuesday and Friday episode again. Uh, pretty good show today. Obviously, we're gonna recap the college football final last night between TCU and Georgia. Such a great game that was. Uh, Phenomenal well, game. You guys, well, if you missed it, you missed a hell of a game. Yep. Hell um, of a game. NFL recap, the playoffs are set. We won't do a playoff preview this show. This show. We'll save it for Thursday, but we'll kind of go through some of the big games and the games that really mattered this week as far as clinching those playoff spots. Um, and then we just got some general sports news today. Obviously, Carlos Correa finally settles with the team. Uh, we'll get into some of like the head coaching vacancies. Harbaugh, um, and some bad news for our Boston Red Sox. So, yep. Casey, any anything you want to say before we get started? Nope, other than fuck Riverside. All right, let's do it. Casey, it's a sad day. It's a bad day. It's the first of many Mondays without a brand new college football week. College football is finally over. What a season it was. What a season it was. Um, one Probably the most locked we've been because of the podcast on college football. I feel like I watched so much, and I love it. Not that I'm complaining, but I watched more college football, and I knew more about shitty football teams than oh, I ever yeah. have before. Um, I want to shout out uh, you. You were uh, I know the season didn't end the way we wanted it to, but you were on the Horn Frog since week one, and what a season they had. Uh, we'll jump right into it. They got their doors kicked in yesterday. They, they Georgia. stayed in Fort Worth. They didn't even show up to LA. Yeah. They stayed in Texas, <laughs> got their dicks fucking kicked in. Yeah, Georgia wins back-to-back. Georgia completes a undefeated season, 14-0, and 15-0. and uh, th- They win 65-7. to um, This game was over before it started, folks. Oh, 100%. I mean, it was just one of those things to where, and they did, they came into the game with a game plan and they executed it perfectly. It was, they were running guys all one way, then they were going back the other way. It was so many misdirection, just confusing that TCU defense to where they didn't know what the fuck was going on. You had dudes big wide play open down after the field. Big play, man. I mean, it was it, unbelievable. Stetson Bennett, shout out to the former walk-on, man. Like, just played his balls off and, and really, really made a name for himself. I, I do think he'll end up getting drafted. He's not going to be a first-round pick, but I think he proved – that he shows up in the big moments and, and uh, you know, NFL teams like that. So we'll see what his future looks like. Uh, Does he Georgia, have another year of eligibility? No, no. He's been, he's like 30, dude. He's, he's done. I, the dude, there's a guy at Oregon that's going to go into his ninth year of college I football, I think. Well, the quarterback of like UTSA is also like 33 or something like that. Like, no, I'm pretty sure he's done. I don't think he's got any eligibility left. Uh, magical season for Georgia, and I, I, I had this question for you: Have they cemented themselves at the top of? Have they knocked yes. off Bama? Yes. Yeah, I, I, oh, think, I, I, think, I, I agree with that, hundred percent. I think when you go back to back, I think it's kind of like we run this and stuff now, and um, just it's hard to see that program falling off. Everyone thought they lost five starters on defense to the, I think, to the NFL, and then. Maybe that was just in the first round, but they lost a ton of guys, um, and they didn't miss a beat. Um, they, they're yeah. young. They're they still young. a pretty young team. Like, you yeah. have an all-American tight end that honestly would be a first-round pick right now, and he can't go to the league because he's too fucking young. 
Talk about Bowers. Bowers. Yeah, yeah. And their their other tight end, Washington, didn't even play that much last night, and he's still he still projected to beat. Oh, was he? Okay, I didn't know that. Yeah, he got – so he got hurt, I think, sometime in the first quarter. I'm yeah, see, sure. it was – things were happening so fast, and I'll be honest, this is kind of how it went. One, my dad <laughs> – Bet TCU and didn't even take the points. Not that it would have mattered, no, but yeah, I mean, so I was like, yeah. It, I, yeah, no, I mean, Georgia hit the over by themselves, but um, so it gave us kind of a rooting interest, right? He put like 50 bucks on TCU, and so we were like, let's go. And I, you know, I was like, there's a chance. Only the only reason I thought TCU had a chance is just because of the type of season they've had, and I, you know, on paper, yeah, they were outmatched, but I was like, dude. So were they against Michigan, and they found a, they found a way they to, found the to, way to you know to really win that game. I was like, if they keep it close, you never know what could happen. And well, they never even had a chance to do that. Um, Georgia just beat Georgia, the shit out of them. That, that, yeah. that's what it was. Georgia just manhandled that game, completely took TCU right out of it. Max Duggan couldn't do shit last night. Yeah. It, it yeah. was a bad. Game. It, it was, and that's that's the last thing. Uh, you know, the NCAA wanted, especially as they're expanding to 12, 12 teams, a lot of the games are going to look like this if you expand to 12 teams. That's just the fact of it. Well, um, and, and with the trans, real quick, let me finish my thought. The one good, it, it will take time. It's not going to be an overnight thing. But with the transfer portal, we will start to see more parity in college football. It's just not going to happen in one year. That's just that's just the truth. Yeah, no, I I, I just think right now and. It's been like this for the past couple years, ever since they started the college football playoff. You have one, maybe two. The occasional, I think there was one year where you had the three teams at the top that it's like, though it's those three teams or those two teams, and then everyone else is like way down here. Yeah. It's, it's, like, it's just no teams compared. I think that's how it was this year. Georgia was just, this is how I looked at it. It was Georgia, then you had Alabama, Michigan, Ohio State, Everyone else, wait, everyone else not even close. I will say that I think if Tennessee stayed healthy, they might have had a chance to make some noise. Um, but once they lost Hennon Hooker, I mean, it just wasn't the same was, team. Yeah, no, yeah, I agree with so, that. Because um, their offense, I think, was good enough. Um, and I think it says a lot. Like, you know, you talk about a team like Michigan, good football team, head and shoulders below what Georgia is right now. Yeah, and they're no, a good I, team. You know what I mean? It's like they're – they they might be able to beat all, almost every team in the country on their best day, and they I mean I yeah I'd like to think they'd score more than seven, but I still think they lose by twenty one probably. No, I agree. No, I, I, people at work were saying that. Like my CEO was like, I think Michigan would have like that would have been a really good game. I'm like, no, Georgia is on another level. They're on a any... different planet. Yes, They're... it's it's you can't compare. I mean, it's. They're head and shoulders over the everyone else in the in the country. It's just yeah. it's ridiculous. Yes, I'm not saying Michigan would have lost sixty five seven. Right, I, they probably would have lost. It, they would have not allowed sixty five points. I'll yeah. guarantee you that. It, Maybe in 40, the fifth forty forty two fourteen. You know, it's still a blow. I wouldn't even so. say that. I would say more of like a fifty six to twenty one or fifty six, even twenty four yeah. twenty eight, something yeah. like that. It, They'll it, lose by a lot, but like yeah. at least make it a half of what yeah. Georgia scores. I mean, and so we're watching that game, and and so I look over at my dad because I I was checked out. Like after when it, I was like, oh, it's ten to seven, cool, and then it was like seventeen seven, and then it was like twenty four seven. seven. I was like, okay, so I'm on my phone looking for a movie because I was like, I'm not doing this whole night. So I sit there and I read off uh, a description of a movie to my dad. He goes, oh, where'd that happen at? Thinking I was reading like a news headline. I was like, no, like you want to put this on? He goes, yeah, yeah. Halftime? I was like, yeah, because there was like two minutes left. (laughs) We put that on. It was only an hour and a half movie. So I was like, well, we'll probably be able to catch like most of the fourth quarter. So the movie had like 25 minutes left. And I'm like, I'm going to look. What do you think the score is? He goes, I don't know. He goes, it's it can't. They gotta have scored more than seven. I was like, I don't know. You, what's your guess? And he's like, uh, we'll go. He was like, I think he said like forty five twenty or something like that. I pulled up. It was fifty two to seven, and I just started laughing. I was like, yeah, but we didn't miss nothing. Don't worry, we didn't miss anything. And so we put it on, 
And uh, Georgia had nobody in the game at this point. Like, they were just, like, letting their fifth-string seniors, yeah. like, get get some show. And the Herb Street was like, there's still seven minutes left in this game. I was like, they could have scored 100 if they wanted to. Oh, 100%. <laughs> Undoubtedly. Yeah. I, I mean, it was just one of those things to where, like, people compa- were like, well, Michigan should have been there instead of TCU. Well, no, because TCU won. TCU won. Yeah. And it's just like one that. of those to where th- when I look at that Michigan game and I compare the two, it's – Georgia just – TCU beat Michigan to the gaps. Well, T- Michigan also, like, shouldn't have – they blitz, they bl- yeah, they, they, but also on defense, they blitzed TCU way too much. If you looked at Georgia, they didn't do a lot of blitzing yesterday. Yeah, they were uh, rushing three, maybe four. Yeah, yeah and they were like – and then they spied Dugan or Duggan or whatever. So, I think despite Georgia being head and shoulders talent-wise – they the coaching wise they they took away everything TCU wanted to do so right. um it was it was good i mean l- listen listen i i think that if anything if any if there's one program that should be like this is why we should have been in there it's Al- alabama i think if there's any program that's going to sit there and be like well we would have you know and i thought i don't know if you caught this cuz i was i wasn't watching at the time but i saw it on twitter David Pollard or Pollock, whatever, Dude, yeah, say, right, right, to, right to Nick Saban's face. These yeah. guys are top, and you know Saban's like, as soon as he, he's got on the phone, he goes, "This shit ain't happening next year." Yeah, I'm no, telling like, you right now. I will, I, I will guarantee you, and I'm, I, I, if can I live bet it, I'll say I'd bet Bama to win. I would bet Bama to win at all. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. Just because of that, like yeah, you yeah. don't. That's a dude you do not piss off. Yep. Because he will he will make you regret saying that shit. He's gonna probably have that video playing all year. Oh, dude, when like when I can when, already bet him. I can all Yep. Bama plus four hundred. Yep. yep, I would throw I would throw ten bucks, hundred bucks on it, whatever you want to do. Responsibly, one eight hundred gambler if you have a gambling addiction. Oh, but, I would say uh, that's better odds than Michigan. That doesn't surprise me. Guess Michigan's odds. Uh, twelve hundred fifty. Oh yeah, I'll say eight fifty. Yeah, TCU I, I isn't even close. No, 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 no. This is a magical season for TCU, man. They're not going to be able to redo this. That's on that. We'll get to that later. I don't want to jump into. Oh, I guess no. It's it's our, it's on the show sheet. Um, does Sunny? How long do you think Sunny Dyke stays? I think this put him on the map for sure. I mean, and I'm it's no disrespect to TCU as a job. It's just a really small school, no, and there's is. only so many resources there. I think this season put him on the map, and I mean, I guess it depends on his roots there and how badly, how comfortable he is. But I guarantee he got calls after, like today. I guarantee there was people that called said, "What's your level of interest?" You know? But it's like, wh- where is he going to go? Because he's already in a Power Five conference. If so I'm Michigan like... and Harbaugh leaves, he's my first call. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. If, Har- I, I mean... if Harbaugh leaves, he's, it's gonna be like, "Hey, you beat us. <laughs> you wanna, you wanna just." You well, know. is it because the, the whole Michigan man thing? Yeah, I, I think they're going to get away from that. Um, you know, and we'll, we'll – well, hold on. We'll get into that later on the show sheet. We have – we'll talk about Harbaugh and, and all that nonsense. But I just want to tip my cap to Horn Frogs. I know it's not the way you want your season to end. That is about as tough a way for it to end for sure. But still a magical season, man. Like, I, there's no way – there's – no way anyone thought they were going to be there at the start of the year. So oh, no. just to get there is is an accomplishment, and they're not the only team that's gotten their teeth kicked in by Georgia. So just come over to our side. I had to do it last year. It's not fun, but it's just like you said, the realization that TCU's we're all chilling on Earth, and they're on like Jupiter. Yeah. You know what I mean? Waiting for us to catch up. So, uh, but yeah, man, sad day for college football. I guess what we have now going forward, folks, is we'll just keep you guys posted on job changes, transfer stuff, and that's probably about it for college football until about springtime when, when we start doing our, our preseason projections and all that kind of stuff. So uh, it was a fun ride, Casey. It was a fun ride. It was a fun ride. I'm sad college football is over. Yeah, and now it's college basketball Saturdays now. Yeah, honestly. Yeah, I can like kind of start to invest and get even more pissed off about what Juwan Howard's done to my Michigan Wolverines, but 
that's neither here nor there. Well, yeah, All right. Let's, before we get into the NFL, let's talk about that shit fucking fest on Oh, Saturday. that game was... Dude, that's one of the worst college basketball games I've ever watched. Didn't even know they were playing until Saturday. Yeah. So, uh, Michigan... Oh, let me get to it. Michigan heads up to East Lansing and plays to Michigan State. Michigan State wins 59-53. This was a horrible game. Horrible, horrible, horrible. Oh, that makes under- oh, that makes it sound like it was close. Both these teams sucked the oh, entire oh, yeah. game. Like, yeah, it, this right. was not some back and forth like, wow, this is great. No, it was pulled your hair out. What are we doing from both fan bases? Both fan bases. Like the score at the twelve minute mark in the first quarter in the first half, it is seven seven. Yeah, I mean, come on. The halftime. What was the score at halftime? Twenty seven eighteen. Like what are we do? What are we doing here? I'm trying to figure out. You have it up right now. What what both teams shoot from the field? Uh, where's it at? Michigan shot thirty four and a half percent. Michigan State shot thirty seven and a half. Oh, dude, that is Michi- so bad. Michigan was nineteen of fifty five. Michigan State was twenty one of fifty six. Michigan that is was, so bad. That's what teams wait, wait. shoot from three. <laughs> Michigan was three for 20 from three. Michigan State was six from 19 from three. <laughs> yeah, the all-time inept <laughs> offensive performance by both teams. I mean, pathetic. I kid you not, Michigan to start the second half was stuck at 28 points for what felt like an hour. I was ta- I was getting so frustrated. They'd get the ball, go down, do some bullshit pass, and Dickinson would miss a layup. And then they'd, they'd go down, State would miss a three, they'd go down, and it was like over and over. And I'm like, what are we doing? And that's the problem, like, like with both programs. Right? State's going to be very good next year, I believe. They're young, and they got, like, one of the better classes coming in. And Izzo's a good coach. Michigan just has zero identity. I mean, they don't have a point guard. They got no go go to guy to get a bucket. Oh, it's pretty I, much Hunter. Throw it in at Hunter Dickerson, and hopefully he fucking makes something happen, or he throws it out to Jet Howard, and hopefully he just throws makes, up a yeah, three and makes yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, dude. And it makes you like. I know you're not a Michigan fan, but I think you could respect like. When Michigan was good under Beeline, they played like poetic basketball. Like, oh, it I didn't was mind them under Beeline. Like it's it's honestly my hate towards Michigan is mainly towards the football team. Yeah, that's fair. I, main reason, like when the Beeline was there, I didn't mind them. Yeah, I mean well, I didn't just root play, for them, but I didn't mind them. They played like a like a brand of basketball that like it was fun to watch, and you could tell like there was a plan. You watch this team, it literally looks like our dads got together and said, you want to go play five-on-five five at the local rec center? And they just have no idea what they're doing out there. Yep. You know what I mean? It's it's unbelievable. And Howard's inability to develop talent. I mean, Terrence Williams, I think is his name, is unbelievably bad. I just I could go on for days about it, and it sucks because Howard has been able to like recruit really well, but it just hasn't you know, matriculated into – into anything so yeah that was a tough game to watch man i was so happy when it was over <laughs> so was i honestly. i was so i was, was like bad. i can finally i can go do something else because this is i put i think i put golf back on and i honestly I like, oh. think i i started because i work i started um, working from home on saturday during the game i was like yeah i'm not i'll just i'll pay attention everyone that's how you know it was bad when you voluntarily start working from home instead of watching a rival yeah game. And i don't get paid overtime yeah. So I was working for fucking free watching the game. That's how shitty this game was. Wasn't good, man. Wasn't good. Um. All right, let's move on. Uh, NFL recap. Cue the music. Cool, cool. All right, let's start with the first game. Uh, this was a fun one, Casey. We were bowling uh, when this game was on. Um, good Casey's a good bowler, guys. I only beat him once, and I got lucky. Well, I'm lucky. I bowled the best game of my life. But you other than that, a good I, game. That was other a good than game. that, yeah. But other than that, I think you beat me by 40, 50 pens every other time. But regardless, oh, way more uh, than that. It was like probably a uh, seventy-five to a hundred. Okay, regardless, Titans at Jags, Duval. Yeah, Jags, AFC, AFC South on the on the line for this. Yep, game. AFC South on the line. Tennessee's banged up, right? Well, Jags win twenty to sixteen. Uh, 
Tennessee was pretty banged up. They're starting Josh Dobbs at quarterback. Um, but regardless, Jags win an ugly one, 20-16. They clinched the AFC South. Uh, and the Titans uh, proceeded to fire four assistant coaches today. It seems like they're shaking things up down there in Nashville uh, because I think, you know, I think Vrabel is like, this is not the standard we've set. I mean, Tennessee's been so solid over the last two or three years. Uh, I think he was pretty frustrated with how this season played out. Right. Um, so we'll we'll see what happens going forward. But, yeah, uh, I think uh, Jacksonville wins. I think they finished 8-8 eight and eight on the year, 9-8. and 9-8. and eight. Nine and eight on the year. Um, that's Doug still Peterson. That's fuck me up. That, that, uh, the, what? When did they switch to 17 games? Last year. Was it last year? I think it was last year. Or two years, whenever the hell it was. Yeah, that's going to screw me up for the next 10 years. Because, yeah. like, I, when, what, when was it? I think it was a couple weeks ago. I'm like, yeah, the Lions can finish nine and seven. Or seven yeah, and you nine. you said that. Or nine yeah. and seven. I'm like, well, what do you mean? Like, 16 games, they play 17 or whatever. Yeah. Um... I mean that the, from what I saw from this game, it I mean it just looked like it, Jacksonville defense pretty much won the game. I mean both defenses played very well. I wouldn't say each court, both quarterbacks. I mean they didn't give up. They didn't turn the ball over. I don't think. Well, let me pull it up. Yeah, Dobbs had one interception. Uh, T. Law didn't have any. But I mean we, we were bowling, so I didn't. I didn't, we didn't really watch much. I didn't really pay attention. To the well, I was gonna say this. The bigger thing with this game is you you had him in a parlay, right? Yes, you have, I had, you have, yes, they were the last team to win my parlay because I had, it was the Chiefs, it was a bullshit parlay, it was a bullshit one, it was, a, it was like one of those ones I just well, grouped together, fuck. I just know four. you needed them to win, so I was like, cool, I'll, I'll root for the Jags, I don't right. give a fuck, let's yeah, go. I had you like know four I mean? really long shot uh, money line parlays. Well, because two of them were college basketball ones, I think, and no, then you had. two of them were NBA. It was NBA. Like, it was Celtics, yeah. whoever the Pelicans played. Uh, Jazz, maybe? No. Celtics, Mavs, Chiefs, Jags. That was the parlay. Yeah. yeah. All money. Um, well, and how about this? Shout out to Doug Peterson, man. What a job after the shit show that Urban Meyer left in Jacksonville to come in. First year head coach there. Uh, obviously, he's got the pedigree. He's got a Super Bowl. But still, to go in and clean up that mess, um, <laughs> that that's like... That's what, to me, separates like uh, good coaches that can coach and good coaches that can lead men. Because to go in there and that how tumultuous and how the turmoil that was left behind and, and to like get that together and be like, yo, we got a talented Ross here. Everyone just needs to lock in a little bit. Um, seemingly got Trevor Lawrence back on schedule to be like, wow, this guy might be a superstar one day. Um, good, for, good for the Jags, man. I... I I that's gonna be a tough place for anywhere to go to play because those fans, man, they get fired up yep. down there in Jacksonville for some football. So um, we'll preview who they play on Thursday. But and once you're in, who knows what can happen in the NFL, man? So you know, I, I I'm not, if I, you have home field advantage, right? And that's the thing. Like I wouldn't, t you can't take anyone lightly. Um, but uh, Jags are young and hungry, and, and they play with some confidence. And, you know, what, what you like to see, too, is they won an ugly one, right? That, that wasn't a pretty win by any means, but they did, did just enough to win, uh, knock the Titans out, and like I said, Titans said, you know what, this isn't acceptable. You guys are all fired. I'll figure it out after that. <laughs> um, so uh, next game here, Giants at Eagles. I'll only bring this up because Eagles clinched the number one seed. Uh, they beat the Giants 22-16. Giants didn't play anybody. They were already in the playoffs, and they weren't playing for a home field advantage or anything like that. So uh, Eagles, however, even though Hurts wasn't 100%, they said we need home field advantage. Uh, they played him, and they go and get it done um, at home against the Giants. Um Three teams from the NFC East are in the playoffs. Right? Yeah, them, Cowboys, and Giants. Or yep. Eagles, Cowboys, Giants. Yep. So Could have had four, be... but Commanders. Oh, yeah, that would have been crazy. A whole division makes it. That would have right. been insane. <laughs> um, but, yeah, good to see Hurts back. Um, that Obviously, he's so dynamic. The Eagles are just a way more dangerous team when he's at quarterback there. Um, so they get a bye. Um, and you know, hopefully they can rest up, get healthy, go birds, go birds, go um, birds. 
Anything else about that one? Nothing about that one. I was going to say, I don't know if I brought this up on the pod, but did you hear, I think I told you this, that in the uh, in tr- uh, spring, not spring training, uh, training camp, uh, the coach for the Giants, Brian Duball, would give Tyrod Taylor easier plays than Daniel Jones yes, to see how that. mentally tough Daniel Jones was. So he'd give Daniel Jones a play that he knew wasn't going to be successful just to see how frustrated yep. Daniel Jones got. That's crazy yeah, that's next insane. level psychology with yeah, coaching, that's dude. Insane. <laughs> yeah. And you know, like when it was all said and done, he grabbed Daniel Jones and said, Son, you pass with flying colors, and I was just fucking with you that entire right. time. Like, <laughs> don't worry, we're not gonna be running naked boot when they have that front. It's okay. Like that's I don't know, that was just funny. Um next game, this was a phenomenal shit. game, high scoring game. <laughs> Score got me probably. New York uh, Jets. Head down to Miami and play the Dolphins. A lot on the line. A lot of playoff impl- implication on the line for this one. Dolphins win a close one, 11-6. to six. You did hear yeah. me say that, right? 11-6. to six. Yeah. Uh, yeah, just a kick fest and then a safety to end the game. Yeah. <laughs> um, Jets or Dolphins, excuse me, clinched the left spot in the AFC here with a win. Um, Dolphins are going to be an in- interesting one. So they were without Tua and Bridgewater, Teddy Bridgewater in this game. Had to start rookie Skylar Thompson. Um, I will say, like, as good as the Dolphins looked at the beginning of the year, and their offense, trust me, is dynamic with Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle, but their best running back, Raheem Mostert, didn't play, I don't think, because he's got, like, a broken bone in his hand or something like that. And then Tua still in concussion protocol. I'm not sure what that looks like going forward. And obviously we'll talk more about it on Thursday. But to, without Tua healthy, we're going to be leaning on that defense a lot. Right. You can't win 11-6 to six games in the playoffs, man. But That's just not going to happen. They're heading to Buffalo. So, yeah. No. Hey, it was a good season. <laughs> it was Sorry, a good season. You won the game, but guess what? Your season's over. Should have yeah. just fucking lost and hope New England won and uh, fucking let New England head up to Buffalo. Yep, yeah, yeah, no way. Or head down to Buffalo. Um, yeah. I'm going to jump the order real quick because I want to talk about the Rams and Lions and, okay, and so sequence. The, so, the Browns yeah. one. And so, Brown, yeah, yeah. Is that, yeah, Browns at Steelers. Steelers win 28-14. No playoff implications here, but Casey's got a stat for you. In the 16 years Mike Tomlin's been head coach of the Steelers, he has zero losing seasons. You talk about stability, man. That's insane. Like dude, they were a a seven win team two weeks ago. Yeah, and then they won their last two games to not be a losing team. Yeah, the same thing know. happened last year. It came down to the last game of the year for him to finish. I think it was eight seven and one or something like that. Yeah, I I you talk you must be nice. That's all I got to say. Right? <laughs> must be nice to be a Steelers fan. Uh, you got a couple Super Bowls, by the way. We're usually pretty good. You know what I mean? Like, God, in what world? Goodness gracious. So yeah, good for Mike Tomlin. Like that's what stability looks like, right? That's the the one of the key traits or identifiers of a of not only just a good team, but a good good organization that they're constantly in the mix. Um, and that's the thing in the NFL. Like, if you just stay consistent. There are years where nine and eight will get you in in that division. Yes, you know what I mean. So just stay within yourselves and win enough games. And you know that's still crazy that throughout all those years, all all the ups and downs with the Steelers, that they still have always finished above five hundred. Is just he, I have his stats. I have his records right here. So in, oh, starting in 07, I'm going to work my way to now. Ten right. and six, twelve and four, nine and seven, twelve and four, twelve and four, eight and eight, eight and eight. 11 and 5, 10 and 6, 11 and 5, 13 and 3, 9, 6 and 1, 8 and 8, 12 and 4, 9, 7 and 1, and 9 and 8. Yeah, that's like, just. That's insane. Yeah. Yeah. Well, shout out to Kenny, MF, and Pickett. Kenny motherfucking Pickett. Don't go yeah. fucking Frank the Tank on me. Yeah. 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 No, that was crazy. <laughs> that was insane. Like, how the hell did he find out about Frank the Tank? Hey, I mean, he's I like, I, he's, 
I get it. Like Frank the Tank is a well known guy, but it's like, how does uh, uh, Mike Tomlin know about him? Yeah, no, he's like he's telling his players, like everyone relax, don't go Frank the Tank <laughs> on me. We're all right. Like basically saying, don't implode. Okay, like right? that's just don't insane. freak out. We're good. <laughs> relax. <Yeah. laughs> uh, next game, tough one to talk about here. Uh, the Los Angeles Rams head to Seattle play the Seahawks, lose uh, nineteen to sixteen in overtime. Uh, locally, um, big game here. Uh, I, this was a massive, massive game for Detroit fans. If the Rams would have somehow won, that just meant the Lions needed a win and they're in. Um, and of course it goes to overtime. A lot of questionable calls in this one, a lot of outcry and rage about the officiating and lack of calls against Seattle in this one. I can think of three right off the top of my head. Intentional grounding call that wasn't called against Geno Smith. Uh, the running into the punter, which was absolute bullshit. He was pushed and guy was already planted. That rule's there to protect them when they're kicking the football so they don't land on their leg or get like chopped up weird. He was like standing still, had already kicked the ball. It was like 10 seconds after he kicked it. Guy just gets pushed into him as he's falling down. They call that late call on that one. Um, and then obviously the lack of taunting call against DK Metcalf. Just just a weird... Oh, and the Qu- Quandre Diggs one. His interception. Yeah. He pointed yeah. the ball right at fucking Bobby, Bobby Wagner. You yeah. can't. That's a tawny. That's 15 fucking yards. Yeah. And then yeah. that bullshit-ass fucking late hit on Jalen Ramsey and Geno Smith. Geno yeah. Smith ran right fucking into him! Yeah, Jalen Ramsey's standing there with his arms like this. And Geno Smith keeps running at him. What, is he not supposed to protect himself? He just dropped of... his shoulder. I would do yeah. the same fucking thing. Run yeah. at me. I'm dropping my fucking shoulder. He didn't move forward side to side. He didn't go out of his way to hit that guy. No. Smith ran to him. He was just kind of like, what's he supposed to do? Hug him? We're all boys here? That's not who Jalen Ramsey fucking, is. It's a, char- it's a fucking charge, not a fucking block. And That's you know, what it's, it's called in the NBA, you dumb fuck. Yeah, and another tough, you know, Baker has Van Jefferson wide open for a touchdown and overtime oh underthrows it. I don't Honestly, know if it's underthrown or, it's, or it's just on both of them. Yeah, I, I think Van Jefferson sort of worked his way back to the ball. But of course, former Lion comes out of nowhere, picks him off. It's like that's just like the worst thing for a Lions fan, man. And and ultimately the Rams weren't able to get it done. I know they tried their darn just for us, uh, uh, just a tough game for a Lions fan. It kind of took a lot of the air out of watching the Packers game um, because obviously it felt like, the, you know, what they could be playing for a playoff spot, and now they're just playing for pride. Which... Oh, dude, our group chat was dead, and honestly, if yeah. the, the, the Rams would have won, that gr- our group chat would have been fucking live. Yeah. The entire yeah. game. Like, every, every single play, there would have been a text about, like, Fuck yeah, we're winning this game. To, we're not winning this game. It would have been yep. all over the place. Yeah, it was tough too because, like, it was a roller coaster of emotions from you know, you know what three months ago we're one and six and it's kind of like well an incoming top three pick, and then they fight all the way back and you buy in and you're like holy shit this young team has a chance to to go into the playoffs and and be a team in my opinion that nobody would want to play. You know what I mean? Uh, if you're the you're talking about the Detroit Lions. Um, but regardless, I don't know. The Rams, are, we are officially unlinked with the Rams after this year. The Lions and Rams had been linked, obviously, with those draft picks up for, for Stafford and stuff. But this was the last year. Rams, you know, thanks for sucking this year and thanks giving us, you know. Thanks for fucking nothing, you pieces of shit. Well, we, they gave us. Actually, thanks uh, for a top five pick. Yeah. Top six pick. Six pick. Top ten pick. Thanks for a top ten pick, actually. But uh, moving on, since we're talking about our Lions, the Detroit Lions head up to Green Bay and play the Packers. Lions win and end the Packers season, which is phenomenal. The bad man is no longer going to be a Green Bay Packer, hopefully. Lions win 20-16. to 16. They look yeah. pretty fucking good. Yeah, shout out to Aiden, Aiden Hutchinson, man. Just a phenomenal game from the kid. Uh, was in that backfield all night against mm-hmm. Aaron Rodgers. Uh, this was a cold, gritty, you know, night game in Lambeau Field in, in January. And the Lions, as young as they are, showed up, man. You could um, 
You know, I was talking about before, you know Dan Campbell had two speeches, right? One if Seattle lost and one if Seattle won. And uh, it, it, they weren't faced. They still went in there and they, they said, if we're not going, then neither are they. You know what I mean? So um, great game all around. Goff looked horrible in the first half, comes out in the second half, plays like some lights out football. Uh, I think it took him a little bit to get adjusted to throwing with those gloves on. Um, he figured out, like I said, Lions get it done. Kirby Joseph becomes the first player since Brian Urlacher to pick off Aaron Rodgers three times in, in their career. Uh, he did it in one season, and it should have been five picks. Uh, he dropped one, and one got called back. So, um, tough, great year for Detroit. Like I said, heading into... It's looking um, like golf's going to be our quarterback for the near future. Yep, yep. Uh, I mean, I'm Holmes. fine with that. Same. Brad Holmes came out today um, and basically said no plans to move on. All all plans are to stick with him. He did say that if they took a quarterback, it would be a situation like Mahomes or Rodgers where the guy sits for a while behind, learns the system, learns from a a pro like Jared Goff. Um, You know, I think think when you look forward for the Detroit Lions, it's it's playoffs or bust, it's division title or bust. Um, I I thought it was – I don't – I don't – well – Obviously, playoffs are bust, but I would say you have to win the division. Yeah, I want the North. It, I, yeah. I say that that's my expectation every year now for the near future is you guys better win that fucking North. Yeah, they go five and one in the division this year, which is the best record. Um, go Chicago ahead. sucks. Green Bay sucks. Minnesota's your only threat right now. Yeah, yeah, and we'll see what Minnesota does this off season. You know what yeah. I mean? And obviously, it's just their offense good. that's just so good. Yeah, yeah. Um, I thought it was really cool after the game. Oh, also shout to uh, Jamal Williams breaking Barry Sanders' uh touchdown record. I know there's, an there's another game. There's I an get asterisk. it, but still cool. I mean, no, it th- doesn't cool. mean the same. But yeah, there's an extra game to do it. Um, he got the game ball. His speech afterwards, where he's crying about losing his great grandfather to then saying, don't confuse these tears. It's all dog in this mug. And this is Detroit. Quit playing with us. They got to resign that guy. Uh, even if it's just for a locker room presence, I think that he perfectly embodies what Detroit is and wants to be about. Um, but another, what I thought was really cool is the second game ball Dan Campbell gave to uh, Sheila Hamp, uh, owner of the Detroit Lions, where in, in – for those that aren't local, they might not realize, but the ownership for the Detroit Lions has been a problem for a long time. Hated ownership group there. Um, constantly felt like they were you know, not very active owners. Didn't really care about the success of, success of the team. It feels like a totally different tone with Sheila. And um, Dan Campbell gave her a game ball. And you could tell what it meant to her and everything. And, and she said it. She said, all roads run through Detroit now. And I think she has an expectation going forward, which is good because that means accountability. Uh, when expectations are set and they're not met, that means that you are now disappointed and have to look, why weren't they met? What do we need to change for those to be met? So I think that's good going forward, that we have some expectations here in Detroit. Brad Holmes said it perfectly. He said, last year, last year we set, last year we set a culture. This year we set expectations, and next going forward, it's going to be about meeting that standard and meeting those expectations. So, right, um, I think it's extremely uh, fun times to be a Detroit Lions fan. Uh, it's going to be very interesting to see what they do this off season as, as far as free agency is concerned. I think for the first time in our lifetime, or one of the first times, this is going to be a destination free agents want to come to. I think yeah, that there is I a think buzz. Want to play. For the for for Dan Campbell, yeah. yeah, I think there's a certain buzz about the Lions that people are gonna be like, well, that's pretty cool. I didn't, I it wasn't like that here. I kind of want to go see what that's about. Um, so I'm I'm ecstatic and expect a lot of Lions talk this off season because there's as good of a season as it was. There's a lot of pieces we can upgrade, and I I think Holmes is gonna have a plan, and I'm excited to see if they do much in free agency, and obviously. We'll have plenty of shows covering the draft. Yeah, hundred percent. Mock a couple so, of mock drafts that we're gonna do for the Lions. Yep. And yep, all for that. sure. So I'm excited. Thank you, Detroit Lions, for an awesome season, man. I it was 
that was one about as much season. that's Love about it. as much fun I've had watching football in a long time. Yeah, it was it was I great. Had fun, I had fun watching this team. It was it was a, a it was refreshing roller coaster effect. It was that, we, it, went, it, we went as low as we can get, and then we just came right up. And you guys, I thought, fuck, what is going on with this team? Are we yeah. in another? Re, are we still in this rebuild that we've been in for years, or is this team finally getting over that hump? And I feel like this team is finally getting over that hump. Yeah, I think I think there's like legitimate reasons to be excited, right? And and in years past, it was like who are we gonna take with our top five pick, and this year it's like who are we gonna take that's gonna make us a playoff team? Yep. Who are we gonna take that when we go to when we have to go to San Francisco next year that we're gonna be able to contain Mc, Fuck McCaffrey? That. We ain't going to San Francisco. We're fucking running. W- we're hosting all the playoff games. Number well, one. Well, I hope so. I hope Number so. One and and you can't like another thing too is you can't take years like this for granted because it's so hard to win in the NFL and as much as it comes down to talent and coaching, you have to get lucky with injuries and a bunch of other stuff. So it, it'll be a long road back. Um you've got a whole another off season, a whole nother, you know, training camp and stuff. But I, I'm I'm thoroughly, thoroughly excited and looking forward to uh next season for sure oh so am i but um let's hop into some sports news to finish up the show here we're, we're good on time so far let's uh jamar hamlin update uh obviously great to see that he's doing well um great to see that he is out of the uh icu in cincinnati back in buffalo still in the hospital they're running some tests and everything um tests today revealed that there's no pre-existing condition that caused cardiac arrest it was just from the collision Seems to be doing a hundred times better. Um, and now I think the question is, uh, you know, does he choose to play football again? He seems to be highly competitive, and obviously that that that'll be answered in due time. I think that if I was, you know, in his camp, I think getting you know fully recovered before we start worrying about stuff like that. But just really, really good. I can't imagine um, what the overreactive response would have been if, if he did unfortunately pass. I'm sure there would have been Congress and legislation and a bunch of overreactions to an art. You know, it's a violent sport. The guys know what they're getting themselves into, and that doesn't mean that they expect that to happen. But um, just really, really glad, obviously, you know, that, that he seemingly is going to make a full recovery. Right. Um, also... Pittsburgh players are scumbags for their CPR celebration. I Too soon, man. Got to wait till next year. Got to at least wait till next year to do yeah. that. And right. I know it's a, it's been a celebration. Like, they're not the only team to do it. First team I saw do it since his injury. Got to have more awareness than that. You know yeah, what I you mean? You got to know. You got to know. You, it's like, you got to wait until maybe playoffs bring it up. Like, the week after, man. Come on now. Can't you got, do it. You got to think better than that. Quay Walker is a scumbag. The guy for the Packers that shoved the Lions trainer, scumbag. And I hope you get a one-game suspension next year. Scumbag move. Scumbag oh, move. Oh, 100%. But th- the thing is, I loved about it was the... the uh, trainer was ready to... Dude, the trainer wanted was all the smoke. He was like, oh, he, was, he didn't back... The, he was half the dude's size and was like, are you kidding me, dude? <laughs> like, I got Penny Sewell right here. I'm not afraid of you. Yeah, I'll all right? fuck you up. We'll fuck you up. You up. Yeah, so uh, I thought that was great. Um, then he cried and then like him, a little bitch in the fucking tunnel. Like, are you good? Yeah. You put yourself in that situation, buddy. Come on, yeah. now. Yeah, and, and then, like, like, to be as tone deaf as you are after a trainer, an opposite trainer in another game saved a young man's life to have the zero – respect for what they do or his that's just crazy and i know we all get we all get caught up in the moment but you you can't you cannot there man i mean it's not like the trainer doing? came up and shoved him if i if just he came up and he like put his arm on him and like tried to shove him out of the way yes natural reaction is i'll look at someone and i'm just gonna push him like fuck you dude yeah. don't fucking push me yeah but like he just put his arm on him and he just tried to step in between the yeah and down it so he can help his fucking do help his player, and the dude gets mad and shoves him. Yeah, I total scumbag. I'm glad you brought up him whining like a little baby bag bitch in the tunnel. That was I laughed so hard because he was throwing a temper tantrum. Yeah, like, like come on now, it, dude, dude, you that that'd be like you have a kid 
and you're like, hey, you can't eat cookies till after dinner. Then they eat cookies before dinner, and you send them to their room, and they're acting like, well, why? What did I do? It's like, how I'm how dumb? You. Come on. <laughs> yeah, like, you're not supposed to do that. So uh, that was crazy, but I had to bring that up because that was – I mean, the, the, the trainer's reaction was like, wow, the culture is not just with the players in Detroit. No, the entire we, we staff. Go, we go all the way down to, we're all dogs. Yeah. <laughs> um, crazy story. Carlos Correa signs with the Twins, not the Mets, not the Giants, but he's back with the Minnesota Twins after 28 days signing with three different teams for a total of like $900 million. He's back with the Minnesota Twins, six years, two hundred million. Uh, some options can get it up as high as two seventy. I read, uh, yep. but the base base salary base six 200. years, two hundred million. They waived the physical on his ankle. Said they don't care how that comes back. You know that's not going to affect the deal. So I don't. From all reports I read, this is a actually a done deal. Um, crazy. Yeah. <laughs> One of the more bizarre, like, bizarre things that I've seen in MLB like, offseason. I heard a rumor, like, on Saturday that he was kind of linked to the Sox, that the Sox were Very linked to the Sox. His, they, Sox were going to get a deal done with him, that it was like a – he was able to opt out after every single fucking year. They were going to give him, like, a seven-year deal with an opt-out after every year. Yeah. So, like, basically, you know, it had been, like, really high AAV. Or like an okay AAV, and if he performed well, he could be like, yeah, I'm going to go test the market. Right. So that's kind of like uh, the deal, like, I don't know, if we're, are we allowed to mention Trevor Bauer? Are we going to get canceled? That's That was like his idea. He's the one that wanted opt-outs after every, oh, every year. every single that way, if, that way, if he feels like his deal's dated, or like if uh, Degrom goes and gets forty million, he can be like, "Well, I'm worth at least thirty five, so yeah. I just go to them." You know what I mean? So I'll, I'll go to kind of I'll kind of a that. genius thing for the player. You're just betting on yourself. That's the only thing. Like yeah. you have to be willing to do that. So, Carlos Correa back with the Minnesota Twins. I mean, that I bizarre. I, I you know what's crazy is like I don't get all this stuff with his medicals because he played and he was healthy like all year. And it's like, not like the injury from minor leagues. He's never missed time. Yeah, he's never missed time in the pros due to an ankle. So I don't. It's just kind of bizarre to me. Um, if I, he's probably going to go on an fu tour this year and go off, like go off. So the Twins stink, though. So we don't got we don't got to worry about them. Um, Blake Corum comes back to Michigan. Uh, probably gives them the best running back room in college at least on paper, with Corm and Edwards. Um, Zach Zenter, who was a guard for Michigan, uh, could go to the NFL. He quote tweeted it with kind of like one of those faces. Maybe he comes back. Does all that change if Harbaugh leaves? I think Corm probably probably goes if, if Harbaugh leaves. I don't think well, so. You think you think this is a – so what, Just because like, it's one of those things to where he's coming off of injury. He's not going to be a top – Torn meniscus and sprained MCL. Like, yeah, that so was not – that was way more of a significant injury than what was being reported. Right, and that's a pretty significant injury. He's not a top four, top uh, fourth round. He's fifth or sixth round pick at this point. It was one of those things. He's going to gamble on himself, play one more year, hope he doesn't get injured, and he's just going to make his draft stock go up. But like uh, right now, I don't know if he would get drafted. Yeah, I don't know. I'm sure that I'm sure just that he's, he's not the biggest guy. He's small. Well, I'm sure that that was also part of the decision. You know, I'm sure his agent put out some feelers and stuff. This wasn't a decision made, you know, blindly or lightly. I did also hear through some sources that I was DMing with, don't want to give anything away, that he was guaranteed by the University of Michigan if he came back an $850,000 NIL deal, which is more than he would have made if he was drafted in the fifth or sixth round. Right. So it kind of made sense for him to come back and be like, hey, if you have another year like you did this year, you're probably going to go in the third or fourth round. So just take the money and come be a kid for another another season. So um, we'll get back. We'll get into some other Michigan and Harbaugh stuff here in a second. Trevor Story to miss most of the season this year. Red Sox second baseman had UCL surgery. It's essentially Tommy John surgery. Uh, just a l less like drastic version. You miss less time. 
Um, but yeah, he's likely going to miss most of the regular season. The Red Sox don't have a shortstop for second baseman. Phenomenal. Phenomenal. And they let you, Xander go. You but think they knew that? What pisses me off is like, if you know that, then they probably did. And they didn't make a move because they like to sit on their asses and not do shit. Yeah. Like, like if you know feels... this, why didn't you get a deal done with Correa that it's like, even if it's a one year deal, like, wait, yeah. one year, 17, 50... 18 million or yeah. 20 million. Yeah. Like 25, I... million, whatever the fuck you want. Yeah. I mean, you probably need to pay him more for a one year deal. So even if it was 30, like who cares? It's only on the books for one year. It doesn't hurt you. You got, you got the money. It doesn't matter. Um, it feels like if they knew he was going to miss most of the year, then there should have been a like an urgency to. Say, I don't care if it's Carlos Correa, any shortstop, like any of the remaining guys, and there's just not. So that seems weird to me. Um, we'll see. We bitched and we got Devers an eleven year deal, so we'll just bitch and hopefully we end up with a shortstop of, of some. Hopefully point. a shortstop falls in our arms, or hopefully. Marcio Mayer is all of a sudden a fucking stud, and he is MLB ready this year. Yeah, yeah I, don't I, don't, I don't see that happening. One see that can hope. Either. Dude, what um, if he? What if he came out in like spring training and lit it up? Like then that, he, they'd send him to five, Double A. But at five fifty, first game comes out, plays against the fucking Janks, and just hits a four fifty bomb off a of Garrett Cole. No, I think they'd send him double A and say do that there, and then we'll send you triple A. And if you do that there, then we'll let you come up. Dude, I'm not desperate even time turn sh- into desperate measures. Might no. just call him up. The most likely what you said is probably going to happen. Yeah, they're going to sign some veteran or or something. They're going to pl- platoon guys that short and second dude, all year. Dude, we'll- they have Nico Goodrum. He can play short. Oh, God. great. <laughs> Go after Jonathan Scope from Detroit. He can play second. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, while we're at it, let's sign Javi Baez's dead body. Yeah. Hey, Cabrera. Last season. Yeah. Last you know season, what? he was not a first baseman. <laughs> yeah. Fuck. Um, Jim Harbaugh interviewed for the Broncos head coaching job today. This is becoming a saga that I'm just sick of. Um, I don't. I don't blame Harbaugh as much as I blame Michigan. Well, well, it's because over the weekend they're under NCAA investigation for Jim Harbaugh buying a recruit a cheeseburger. That is Trump. so stupid. That is so stupid. Um, so it no, could I'm be not... that because he knows shit's going to come down on U of M uh, possibly, and it's maybe. might as well jump out while I can. I hear that it's an ego thing for Harbaugh. I, I, he's pissed that. You know, Mel Tucker is making ten million a year, and Harbaugh's like barely making any money. He's not he, like I'm not like saying this just just to say it. Harbaugh should be the highest paid coach in the Big Ten. You just won back to back Big Ten titles. You went back to back playoff appearances. You've w- lost what Whoa. two game, two or three games in the last two years. You gotta you gotta pay him more. And I think it would put a rest to this. Also, if Harbaugh is as big of a football guy as everyone says then I can't blame the guy for feeling like he has more to accomplish. And if he thinks that he's done all he can and all he wants to do at Michigan, that's fine. But we got to have a, a, a d- definitive decision one way or another because it does nothing for recruits. How If, I, if you're a young man and you want to commit to Michigan, how are you going to do that if you don't even know who your coach is going to be? Like, that's crazy talk. But it's also, okay, why are you going to say, like, yeah, I'm going to feel out the NFL and I'm going to leave Michigan when you don't have a job? Right. So it's like, right. I mean, it, it, to me, it, I mean, if you're going to well, – I just feel like the last couple of years, who knows? I mean, this was confirmed that he did interview with the Broncos. That is confirmed he did interview. In the yeah. past couple of years, did he interview for – I mean, yeah, last year he interviewed for the – Vikings. The Vikings job that was confirmed that he yeah they did. couldn't kick him out of that building fast enough that interview went horrible yeah it's just one of those things I mean like he's been getting linked to these jobs but it's like how many of them have he actually interviewed for well it's like it's like he has interest but is there any interest back yeah you know what I mean that's the big thing so um 
we'll see. You know, I I heard today that like he's a, he's a you know one of the Broncos' top candidates, and I'm like, well, you haven't interviewed anybody else, so yeah, of course, who else? Who else is a top? Yeah, candidate, he's the only so. one you've interviewed. You've interviewed him, and you have your defensive coordinator scheduled. I think I saw it today. It's other yeah. than that, you've requested Sean Payton. You've requested the Lions. You've, well, what Ben Johnson? They've requested him. Yep. Um, sticking with the Harbaugh thing here, I, our boy Randy posed an interesting question to me, and it was I had to think about it. Harbaugh leaves. Do you call Cliff Kingsbury and see if he wants to come back to the NFL or college? Is he a Michigan man? I, I don't. I don't. I don't know. Put, putting the Michigan man stuff aside, now now that we're in the college football playoff, we got to start thinking about what we can do to take this program to the next level, regardless of the Michigan man stuff. If you set that aside, if if, if you could hire anybody, availability matters. But like, is that a phone call you would at least make? I mean, look what he did with Mahomes. Maybe he can do the same thing with JJ. I, no. You don't think so? I just think Mahomes is just a different talent. I well, I'm just saying look, that he's an offensive at, type of mind. What did he do at Texas Tech? Nothing. Yeah, he, he didn't win. He hasn't won anywhere he went. I'm just – who knows? He's got more experience now. He's a young guy, bright offensive I mind. Mean, if I'm them, I would want to go after a guy like a Sonny Dykes, a – Something more established? Something, yeah, something that's more established that has shown that he can win games, actually, and not yeah. just okay. Well, he has talent on his team, and I mean, I don't think Cliff, I don't think Kingsbury is that great of a coach, in my opinion. Yeah, no, it's just it was just a thought, you no, know, because that the problem is when Harbaugh does this, so many of the best candidates are already off the board. So now you're going to be stuck, you know, in the you know you could be shopping at Whole Foods, you're going to be at Dollar General now. So. Um, We'll see. Go I, off your I, urban. I mean, I'd love that, but that'll never happen. That would never happen. But yeah, I mean, he's proven it. He, he wins everywhere. No problem. I, I would sell my, like, I, I would put my convictions aside because I think urban would win a national title at Michigan. I just do. I think Michigan has all the all the resources, and Urban's proven everywhere he's gone. But I don't know if Urban's going to get a lot of looks because of how things ended in Jacksonville. He burned a lot of bridges there, right? Um, and obviously, he's got a cushy job at Fox. I mean, he makes millions of dollars to basically sit up there and just talk. You know yeah. what I mean? So, uh, I, I know another name, and I would hate this if I was Michigan. Uh, is Bill O'Brien, the Alabama's offensive coordinator? I would be so, dude. I would be so pissed. He's not only is he hard to look at respectfully. He just, I, I just don't like the guy. I remember when he was on Hard Knocks with the Texans, and I couldn't stand him. I couldn't stand him. Socks. Yeah. So, we'll see. We'll see what happens. That's going to be probably the biggest story as far as Michigan football is concerned. Is if Harbaugh leaves, does he leave? And then if he does. Do you just promote from within and try to keep as many of the guys there, or do you try to make a splash higher? And um, it's like one of those things, like like if Michigan knew Harbaugh was leaving, you'd like to think their hat would have been in the ring for Dion. even. Well, come here, we'll give you 10 mil. Right. You know, so I, I don't know. I don't know. But um, last thing we're going to talk about real quick, Cardinals. I would so hate that. Oh, you would be so pissed. <laughs> yeah, because you love so Dion. <laughs> yeah, you love Dion, but you hate the school he coaches for. That would have been great for radio. I would have loved that for the podcast. No, I would have hated Dion. I would have called him a little bitch. Um, yeah, that's that's crazy to think about. Cardinals, Broncos, Texans, Colts, Panthers are all the NFL teams that have vacancies. And most likely Rams. Most likely Rams. Sounds like Mouve is on his way out to a cushy TV deal. Um, Cardinals president today said Kyler Murray will have a say on their new coach. Um, that's going to be interesting. Their their ownership is basically, you know, putting all their eggs in, in Kyler's basket. So that obviously the coach that comes in is going to have to really believe in Kyler as a player, which we'll see. I'll guarantee um, you he's he's going to be in the interview. Doing this. Yo. Sorry, I'm playing. Sorry, I'm playing COD Mobile, Coach. <laughs> um, hey, they're gonna. He's gonna be sitting there. They're gonna be like, Kyler White, what's wrong? He's like, I told him the boys I'd be on at four. It's four fifteen, guys. Like, right. They're they're getting dubs without me. Um, 
As we mentioned, the Broncos have interviewed Harbaugh already. They requested an interview with Sean Payton. Sean Payton's an interesting one to me because um, he's going to get a job. No, undoubtedly. Um, it's just going to, and he'll probably, he'll get the job he wants. He's the number one candidate by far. Um, and he's already been tied to Vic Fangio as his defensive coordinator. And Vic Fangio, former Broncos head coach, said that I don't want to go back to Denver. It didn't end well there for me. They kind of were shitty to me on my way out. Um, my dad made a good point. I think it's a new ownership group then from when Vic Fangio's there because they just got sold to the wall. So I don't know if that would matter. Um, it's also tough because does Sean Payton think that Russell Wilson's decent? Do, does he care that they have no draft capital because they gave it all up to get Russell Wilson? Um, the Denver job's very interesting to me because besides all that, like Denver has very stable ownership. It's a great place to play. They have a winning culture, um, great place to live. So, yeah, and they've got some good young pieces there with Judy and, and Cortland Sutton and um, Russell Wilson. The, well, and then on defense, they've got they've got some some pieces as well. But that's an interesting one to me to see what the Broncos do. Um, Texans fire Lovey Smith. This really pissed me off because yeah, I was surprised by that one. That one that one kind of pissed me off. Too. They they fired their coach last year after only having one year to do it. They hire Lovey Smith, fire him after one year. What does that tell you about, like, what does that tell future coaches? I get one year to prove I can do it. This roster stinks. Why, yeah, like, why do I, I only get one year? What am I supposed to do year? with Davis fucking Mills as my fucking quarterback? And he's a good re- receiver, but Brandon Cooks is my number one guy. What are we yeah. doing here? Yeah. I... I don't know, man. It's it's that's that's to me is like not an organization I'd want to go. Be, no, I'd, I would, I'd be like, I wouldn't want to play I'd, for them. Yeah, I'd be like, I'm good. Um, Colts request to interview both Ben Johnson and Aaron Glenn. For those who don't know, Ben Johnson is Detroit Lions offensive coordinator. Aaron Glenn is the Detroit Lions defensive coordinator. Uh, Glenn has interviewed uh, to be a head coach three other times in his career. Uh, I think all I can speak for all Lions fans. By saying this, Ben Johnson stinks. You don't want him. Aaron Glenn stinks. You don't want him. These guys are nothing without Dan Campbell. Trust me. They would okay? be horrible head coaches. You don't want them. Yeah, they, yeah. They are great coordinators, and they already have jobs. So yeah. fucking leave them alone. <laughs> yeah. Leave them yeah. the fuck alone. Uh, yep. Yep. Um, ours, not yours. Not ours. Yep. Yep. I, I, I know I can say like Ben Johnson is a bad guy. He's not a good family guy. Uh, not a football like, guy. He's not a he football doesn't, guy. He doesn't like dogs, which is a, it's a red flag. He and, doesn't like uh, football. He a little hates birdie football. Hates, hates football. football. And a little birdie told me that Jared Goff actually called all the plays this year. Yeah. Ben Johnson's headset wasn't even plugged in. No. So I just want to put that out there. Yep. And then look at the Lions' defense for the first six, seven weeks of the year. Uh, yeah. That, yeah. Just look at that. Look at that tape. That's that, that, that's, that's, that's what you're going to be getting after, yourself into. That, uh, Dan Campbell took over the defense the last half of the season. So it was all yep. Dan Campbell. Yep. Aaron Glenn isn't shit. Ben Johnson isn't yep. shit. They need to stay in Detroit so Dan Campbell can teach them how to be good coaches. Yeah. I will say this, all jokes aside, though. This is what happens when you start winning, and it's a product of a good organization that you, you know, you guys are going to get poached because they're interested in what you have going on. So good for them. Congratulations. I fully expect Ben Johnson to be back. I think he's one year out. Um, This was his first full year of calling plays. Um, I think it'll be good for him to get the interview experience, but I don't, I would be a little surprised. Um, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. And obviously, Campbell's proven, you know, that he can replace coordinators. And I'm sure they already have an idea of, of who could step in. But that's uh, that'd be a big loss, like all jokes aside. Because I think Ben Johnson really got this offense cooking this year. I mean, goodness gracious. That that hook and ladder on, like, oh, third and 17. Oh my God, what are we talking play. about? That was a phenomenal play. I fucking love that. I, I that mean, was... Every, like, there was just a lot. A lot of play calling that the Lions had on Sunday that was just phenomenal. Going, I love the going forward All year. on fourth down. I, I, 
depending on where you are in the field and the situation, I love fourth and short, go for it. I love yeah. that shit that the Lions do. Gives uh gives your players a lot of confidence too because on third down, if you know you're gonna pro- on this part of the field, if you don't somehow take a penalty or lose ten yards to a sack, when your players know this is probably two down territory, it opens up the playbook. Yep. Because now you're not worried about getting five yards. You're like just get two and a half. Just get get us half there, and then we'll get the rest next play. Um, yeah, loved loved what, what the Lions aggra- like. Uh, contained aggressiveness right like at the right right times um last thing here panthers are set to interview former lions coach jim caldwell apparently he's got quite like a bunch of ties to the area um and i think i'd, I'd like to see caldwell back like back caldwell coaching because i i was lions i was appreciative dirty. yeah i was appreciative of his time here um he doesn't move the needle like dan campbell does he's not you know, going to make headlines or anything, but he's a football guy. He's a good coach, and uh, I'm glad to see him at least get a chance hey, to interview. he makes the playoffs. He ain't no fucking Matt Patricia. Yeah. And that was what we fucking ex- ex- got exchanged for, was Caldwell for Patricia. Hmm, was it? Yeah. Yeah. So it was Schwartz Caldwell Patricia. Yep. Oh, wow. Because Schwartz yeah, feels... was that... Uh, the Eagles. When I'm Colorado surprised he hasn't coach. gotten another head coaching job. I think he's a better coordinator than he is a head coach. I think that's why. Yeah, probably. And I think teams see that. Yeah. Well, that does it. I was gonna press the button. It does it, folks. Powered hey, by, by Riverside. The shitty Riverside website. Playoffs coming up. Playoff, playoff football, playoff football. NFL, NFL. Love you guys.